Well, Merry Christmas and uh, Happy New Year. I'm glad you're joining me uh, again as we uh, celebrate God's Word and study His Word together. You know, especially as we think about the new year, everyone wants to make certain uh, changes in their life. And, and maybe for you, it's to read God's Word and study God's Word every day. So this is a, a good start to your new year. Keep up, uh, you know, this uh, study uh, continually, you know, each and every day. Uh, God's Word is that lamp for our feet and the light for our path. It's what we need uh, to be reminded of the love that came down for Christmas uh, and the love that is uh, with us each and every day in God's Son, Jesus Christ. So uh, we begin the new year together. We continue in uh, studying our changeless God and uh, the blessing that we have in being His children, which is our emphasis today as we look at Numbers uh, chapter 6, 22 through 27, and we're going to talk about uh, God's name, God's name being placed upon us, and how God blesses us uh, because we are his children uh, by grace through faith. And so as we continue our study today, let's uh, begin with a word of prayer. Uh, the Portals of Prayer uh, begins uh, its new cycle here uh, in the month of January. And so we begin with the prayer for the circumcision and name of Jesus, observed January 1st. Dear Jesus, your circumcision as a baby foreshadowed the day you would bleed and die for me on the cross. And your name, which means God is salvation, points to what you would give to me through your life, death, and resurrection. I praise you that in your name I am saved, I am forgiven, and I am yours forever. Remind me of this truth as I go through all the days of my life. In your wonderful name, I pray. Amen. Okay, so let's get started again for this uh, new year and Aaron's blessing upon God's people, the blessing that God uh, said uh, that uh, should be used upon his people. So this is the Lord saying, this is how you are uh, to bless the people. I liken this um, to Jesus uh, being asked by his disciples, Lord, teach us to pray, and he uh, teaches them uh, the Lord's Prayer, which we use in our church um, really every service because it is the perfect prayer. It encompasses all that we, that we need to pray for. Now, it doesn't mean that that's the only prayer that we can pray, uh, but, it's, but it's there to, to shape and, and to guide us uh, in our prayer life and to pray. And this blessing that God gives then to Aaron uh, is the blessing that is upon God's people, God's people through all generations. And so what does this blessing say? You shall say to them, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So shall they put my name upon the people of Israel and I will bless them. Notice the emphasis, the Lord. The Lord do this for you. And the Lord is pleased uh, to do this for us. Uh, being God's children means that he does love us. I mean, he loves all people, but those who believe in him know his love and know the fact that he, he wants uh, to give us all that we need for our body and soul. And not only does he want to give it to us, but he does give it to us. And, and so we want to live in that, in that love of God um, as, as we carry on our lives each and every day. Um, so that, you know, we, we know who he is and we know his blessings and we respond, you know, in, in living uh, for him. So what is the New Testament equivalent of placing God's name on his people? Uh, well, what is it? We think about, of course, our baptism, uh, where we are baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Uh, the Trinity, God is there, right there at our baptism, the Father who created us, the Son who has redeemed us, and the Holy Spirit, who, through God's word connected to ordinary water, brings us into his family, to God's family. For in baptism we have forgiveness of our sins. In baptism we receive faith to believe in the Jesus 
God's Son who died and rose for us. And so God's name is placed upon us. And so we are no longer, you know, God's enemies, but we are brought into his family as his children, children of the Heavenly Father, heirs of everlasting life. You know, we receive that inheritance, so we know we're, we're now adopted into God's family. So the New Testament equivalent of placing God's name upon his people in blessing is at our baptism. And, and then being his, you know, we, we want this blessing to be known each and every day, to be reminded, you know, that we are baptized, reminded of the gifts that we have received, and to celebrate uh, that God is with us and God loves us every day. So bless indeed has a positive thrust. The Lord bless you. The Lord, you know, give you all that you need for your body and soul. Keep, we talk about protecting us. Uh, and, and guarding us. Uh, together, the two promise uh, God's full blessing for every aspect of your life. The Lord bless you. The Lord give you what you need for your body and soul. And then keep you in his uh, family. Keep you a a as a part of, of his, of his uh, love and, and mercy every day, um, which is done as God communicates his word to us. Uh, so that we continue to believe in the Lord. Faith, faith unites us uh, to God. Um, and a shining face is a sign of pleasure. God making his face to shine upon you implies his pleasure in and favor toward you. God wants us, you know, to be in communion with him. And uh, when we are, that really uh, causes, uh, you know, God to be happy uh, for us. Uh, for the Lord to lift up his countenance upon you indicates that nothing is disturbing your relationship with him. He is ready in his grace to look right at you and see you as his son or daughter. And you're ready for that too. I think the love that you know, a parent has for their child and the child has for their parents is what we're, what we're uh, seeing here um, with God to us, his children, and we as his children, the believer to God. You know, this, this wonderful exchange of, of love and, and, and commitment and faithfulness. And just to know that when we are together, uh, we are strong. And we know that, uh, that our, our father, our parents take care of us. You know, children know this. We know that our Heavenly Father takes care of us as well. And we have that assurance uh, in our lives. And it's just a wonderful privilege, really, then to be a God, part of God's family. So, Lord, bless you, keep you, make his face uh, to shine upon you, be gracious to you, you know, give you everything and, and then some. And the peace that God gives, the Lord lift up his countenance upon you uh, and give you his peace. Uh, peace. The peace that God gives is more than absence of turmoil, the Hebrew shalom describes the positive well-being and security that are yours as you live in the awareness of God's continuous presence and blessing and implies that you are also at peace with those around you. So where, where is peace uh, received? Where is it known? Uh, peace is in forgiveness, right? Uh, because when there is no forgiveness, sin remains, and sin means that we are at war with God, um, that we are not in favor with God, but we are outside of his favor, and we are the ones who, you know, who are his enemies, but the peace that we have is when the sin is removed uh, in God's forgiveness, and we are joined with God, uh, to God, by uh, his grace uh, through faith, so this is what, you know, is if God wants for us in our lives, that God is doing uh, for us in our lives, blessing us, keeping us, you know, making his face to shine upon us, to be gracious to us. He's lifting up uh, his countenance upon us so that we have peace. The assurance of sins forgiven, the assurance of life and salvation. I had a, a shut-in, um, and a shut-in is a person who can't come to church, so I, I came to them and uh, share with them God's word, uh, which means we confession and absolution, 
uh, read a uh, devotional like Portals of Prayer, pray the Lord's Prayer, have the Lord's Supper, the sacrament of the altar. Uh, but we always concluded with this benediction. And she just said, the part I love the most about uh, our time together is the benediction. You know, not because she was ready for me to leave, you know, because we enjoyed our time together. But just to know that when I left, God was with her. And being with her was a reminder of who God is and that God does love her. And that she was able to carry that with her um, until I would see her again the next month. And I just think about how wonderful that is. And, and for us, too, you know, when we leave the service, uh, the divine service, that, that is with us as well. You know, we don't go in, in you know, leaving the church, you know, alone. Uh, we have God on our side and God for us and God showering us with all that we need uh, for our lives. Um, so there's the blessing again. How do you feel about the formal use of the ancient blessing in the worship life of the contemporary church? Uh, you know, when we think about contemporary, I'm not a big fan of that. So we'll talk about the church of today versus, you know, the Old Testament church and the New Testament church. But the fact of the matter is the Old Testament church and the New Testament church are linked together. So having this ancient blessing reminds us of uh, the covenant promise that God made to his people to bring forth the Savior. Also, the Lord spoke to Moses. And so this is what you should say to the people of Israel. And we talk about as Gentiles, you know, we are brought together with the nation of Israel by faith. So we are united, not divided. So this blessing is still important today. It still serves as a wonderful, again, reminder of God's covenant promise uh, of a Savior to forgive uh, and, and, and to save uh, and to remind us that God is with us every day. So it's, it's timeless, um, and it's beneficial for all of us uh, to receive this, right? In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Uh, God, the Lord, uh, blessing us. What attitude should we concentrate on cultivating in ourselves as the Lord's name is being placed on us through this blessing? What, you know, what, should, what attitude should we have? You know, I think a, a one of humility, one of humility um, in the sense that because of our sin, we were unworthy to be you know, God's children. We were lost and condemned, but God sent his son into the world to save us, and we have received his salvation in our baptism. And this gift of baptism is, is God's action uh, that we can receive and do receive, you know, all that we need to know to become his children, forgiven of our sins, again, faith to believe. So, you know, to me, our, our attitude is this humility and, and just, you know, filled with, with the joy and peace of, of God loving me, of God saving me, of God wanting to me to me to be his child. And then I am an heir of everlasting life. So, you know, that's what I kind of, you know, the attitude I take uh, when we concentrate uh, on cultivating ourselves uh, with the Lord's name upon us is just how great, how thankful I am to be a child of God and what a, what a rich blessing it is to carry out my life uh, today, looking forward uh, to life everlasting. Um, so we still have the blessing here that we've had for three slides because it's the full encompassing of our Bible study. So the Christian church also uses what we call the apostolic benediction, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. This New Testament benediction is clearly Trinitarian in its formulation and its thrust. Why did it not replace the Aaronotic benediction completely in the church? Well, there's no need to replace it, right? They both serve as a reminder of, of God, who he is, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, uh, that God is favorable toward all that he has made and that God wants all to be made, uh, to be saved, to be in fellowship uh, with him, the love of God being showered upon us. So, it doesn't have to be one or the other, but it's a both and. You know, it's an opportunity for us, uh, just as we don't have 
one creed, the Apostles' Creed. Or we use the Nicene Creed and the, Ath the Athanasian Creed, which have you know kind of a, a different thrust at times, but they share they still share the same message. And you know, when we think about the creeds, there's an extension on who Jesus is, you know, in the Nicene Creed versus the Apostles, and then the Athanasian is, is the longest of all creeds, giving a more distinct understanding of who God is. But these blessings don't replace the aeronautic benediction because, you know, the Lord has given it to us. The apostolic benediction still serves as, uh, you know, the same purpose. And so we can use both, you know, in our worship. And they both remind us uh, that God is for us, that we are his children, and that God blesses us every day uh, with what we need. We talk about our daily provisions, food, clothing, home, shelter, family, friends, you know, daily work, and that God also blesses us with our soul, the forgiveness of sins, life and salvation received by God's grace through faith. The point is, you know, this is one of those times where don't let uh, what is good cause division, but embrace it. Remember, first and foremost, that God uh, wants to bless you, uh, that God is blessing you, and to receive it, especially, you know, as we go into this new year. You know, people want to put away the, the past year and focus on the new year. You can kind of understand that. But this blessing takes place every day every month and every year god for you so as you think about last year god for you think about this year god for you so the lord bless you and keep you the lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you the lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his everlasting peace again thanks for joining me again in this new year. I pray that we'll continue to study God's word together, continue to grow in our relationship with God until he, Jesus, uh, returns in glory. So God bless your day and God bless you in the new year.